we were discussing on a case study that was the development of MEMS accelerometer that is piezo resistive accelerometer and in my last two lectures I have discussed in detail on the design aspects of the accelerometer along with the external circuits necessary for characterization the accelerometers. Today's lecture is on the development of the technology of the MEMS piezoresistive accelerometer. How the accelerometer is designed that has been told already. Now the technology development as well as packaging and characterization how it can be done that will be discussed in today's lecture then the case study will be completed. So, for designing accelerometer the end of the design process is making the mask. Mask was not discussed in my last lecture. Today I will first initiate the discussion on the fabrication of mask and then we will switch over to the technology development. Now, for the layout of the mask here first you have to design the resistance, piezo resistance and so far the design is concerned is same as the design register design used in integrated circuits. Already you know how in IC registers are designed it is you have to know the seat resistance of the layer which will give the desired resistance value. Now, if you know the seat resistance then you have to select how many number of square are required to get that resistance and in our design we found that our resistance value is nearly 1.5 kilo ohms in that range. But one thing I would like to mention that in any diffusion technique the resistance variation after fabrication is nearly 10 to 20 percent. In most of the ICs are designed in such a fashion that even 20 percent variation of the resistance values will be accepted by the designer that means design should be robust so that with that resistance change the performance of your circuit will not hamper a much. Similarly, here also we assume even 10 15 percent variation the complete circuit should work. And in our case so far the IC is concerned that is mainly the resistance bridge and interface electronics will separate add outside the chip because we are not going to have the smart piezo resistive accelerometer sensor acceleration sensor rather the multi chip module we are thinking. So, first if we discuss on the resistance we have you remember the seat resistance value we have assumed is a 250 ohm per square and junction depth is 2.5 micrometer. So, there you can see the diagram in the left side. So, there the width of the resistor we assume it is a 20 micron. So, accordingly length we have decided 120. So, 120 by 20. So, it will be 6 and then it will be approximately 3 kilo ohm type and, and the, the contact pads in both the side will give 0.5 square also. So, in the total resistance value will be should be nearly say 2.1 it is nearly 1.5 kilo ohm I think 1.5 kilo ohm. So, now uh, if we connect two resistance in series it will be 3 kilo ohm. So, now this is the contact area in the second diagram it is 20 micron by 20 micron it depends on your technology, but here we have taken the uh, the robust values of 20 micron by 20 micron 
so that in future we will not have any problem. So, the contact is the second diagram is the contact di uh, pads and the overall uh, the structure looks like that. Now, after the piezo resist resistance layout, then we will go for other layouts that means, etching you are going to etch and metallization. So, here basically it will be nearly in uh, masks are nearly 4, but another 2 masks are required. So, that is for your uh, the, uh, the glass etching mask is required as well as some passivation mask is also required that is not included. Fabrication of the middle layer which is the sensor for that you need the 4 layers that is mask number 1 is the resistor mask, mask number 2 is back side etching mask, mask number 3 is front edge and contact window, mask number 4 is metal line and mask number uh, sorry these are the 4 masks and if we all the 4 marks are overlapped then it looks like that all the layers together. So, a resistance mask 1 resistance looks like here it is shown here and back side means a one front one back side mask is required because you are going to etch the complete thickness of the silicon by bulk micro machining technology. So, here uh, initially from back some of the layer is etched. So, that is using the TMH and, and the front also if we remove the silicon dioxide from selected portion. So, when you when you put in the H bath then completely the uh, from uh, some of the region it will attack from front side and back side and thorough hole will be there and in the front edge mask where it is protected. So, particularly in the flexure region and the proof mass region which is at the center. So, that portion we have to protect it. So, that from the front those regions will not be etched, but from the back it will be it will be etched and it will stop somewhere, somewhere means the, the flexure thickness. So, just by uh, just by deciding how much time required will, will give you for front edge and back edge. So, your flexure thickness will be determined from that time management. And these are the uh, the, uh, uh, the interconnection layer because Houston's bridge we have seen there are 8 resistances. So, you have to connect 8 resistances such that you can get very low off axis sensitivity. So, here the resistance lines are moving from one end of the bridge to uh, one end of the uh, the frame to other end of the frame and there the lines are routed in a such a fashion that there should not be any overlap. So, we have not used any underpass resistances here and we have used single level of metallization. So, some tricks you have to follow so that the metal lines will move in a such a fashion two lines will not touch each other or it will not uh, overlap. And there are four bond pads required you know one is uh, two are for uh, power supply and two are for output. And here you can see there are five bonding pads one extra bonding pads is has been given here that is for substrate contact. So, the substrate should not be floated substrate should be grounded otherwise if it floats. So, there may be problem of stability during the measurements. So, that is why four bond pads two are meant for power supply two are meant for output and one is for substrate contact. So, these are the complete layout and along with the bonding pads is shown here. Now, the fabrication process. So, fabrication process first step you have to specify the wafer and we are going to use silicon 100 n type because we are going to make a resistance p type diffusion and resistivity of the wafer is 4 to 6 ohm per square thickness of the wafer 270 micrometer plus minus 5 or 10 percent variation is there and is a double side polished and this is 2 inch diameter wafer and 2 inch diameter wafer you know is the thickness is roughly 280 micrometer 
plus minus 5 micrometer all way tolerance is there. So, this is the uh, uh, basic wafer and then after taking that wafer you go for oxidation and that is called initial masking oxidation that is 20 minute dry oxidation, 120 minute weight oxidation, another 20 minutes is again dry oxidation. You know normally any sort of masking oxidation we follow dry weight and dry sequence. So, that quality of the oxide is good as well as it will not take much time and it has been done at 1100 degree centigrade and if you follow this sequence the thickness is expected to be 1 micrometer. Now, after masking oxidation you we are going to use mask number 1. Mask number 1 is oxide patterning for boron diffusion that means first step is to fabricate the resistances and the resistance location already found and accordingly mask has been designed maximum stress region they are located resistances are located. So, oxide patterning for boron diffusion for resistance we are going to use the boron diffusion solid source diffusion source is boron nitride cake and from there there is two step we will follow first is pre deposition and then is drive in and boron pre deposition diffusion we follow 15 minute 950 degree centigrade and there the seat resistance is approximately 90 ohm per square. So, with that step next is LTO, LTO is a low temperature oxidation. In particular boron diffusion normally in between pre deposition diffusion and driving diffusion we follow a step which is known as a LTO low temperature oxidation. What is the requirement of that particular step? We use this because we have to remove some boron stain during the pre deposition diffusion using the boron source boron nitride cake a boron stain that is borosilicate glass a very thin layer of borosilicate glass will be deposited along with pre deposition diffusion. This thin layer of borosilicate glass is very difficult to remove afterwards means after driving and in driving we know there should not be any source of boron from external side only whatever has been inserted into the silicon that will redistribute that is the objective of driving step. But here if we do not remove that stain layer of boron then they will act as a source during the boron driving process also. So, in that case the seat resistance will change it will not tally as per your simulation results. So, that is why in between the pre deposition diffusion and the driving diffusion whatever the boron stain is formed that has to be removed and that can only be removed if that borosilicate glass is completely oxidized that means we have to go for a very low temperature weight oxidation 30 minutes 750 degree C. So, with that the 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 whatever the bolo silicate stain layer is formed on the surface of the silicon that will convert it into silicon dioxide and after that you give an buffer hydrophobic acid dip that means etch that this this L, uh, this boron stain by buffer hydrophobic acid then clean it it will be it will be uh, the the surface boron source from the stain will completely be removed. After that you go for boron driving and that boron driving we follow here 100 minute of driving and 1125 degree C okay. that is basically uh, the, the oxidation and annealing together. And because of that you know the impurity which has been inserted by boron pre deposition will redistribute and it will further go along the depth of the silicon and junction depth will be decided by the boron driving process mainly. And after driving is completed the expected seed resistance is 250 ohm per square. Now, next step is the again lithography. During the driving process we know we normally fabricate a thin layer of oxide 
that thin means it is not thick as the initial masking oxidation that is why I am calling it thin and that is nearly 5000 to 6000 angstrom unit and that is adequate for subsequent the lithography step and there we pattern the oxide for backside silicon etching that is the mask number 2 is for backside silicon etching. Okay. So, after that again we go for lithography with mask number 3. Mask number 3 is oxide patterning from front and C w is contact window and front side silicon etching. Okay. So, back side lithography we did it, but they after that in mask number 2 in the, in the previous slide, after that we did not go for the complete etching. Okay. Then subsequently go for because it is double side polished wafer, we go for the mask number 3 and lithography there and after lithography then front side silicon is etched little bit, oxide is removed in the lithography then the silicon is etched that means you define where the holes complete holes thorough holes is to be made and here it will protect the proof mass region as well as the, uh, um, uh, the flexure region. And you should not go for long time etching because then the surface will be completely um, will uh, uh, irregular means there will lot of ups and downs and then metallization may be a problem. So, few hundred angstrom or say at the most uh, 1 micron or 2 micron you etch it, after that you go for metallization and there aluminum is deposited and pattern and aluminum thickness is 1 micron. Then this aluminum will remain on the top and in the top and bottom both places we have defined the regions where silicon is to be etched by using lithography mass number 2 and mass number 3. Then the metal after metal pattern is over that is the mass number 4, then you go for anisotropic etching. This etching in 5 weight percent dual doped TMH at 70 degree centigrade. Dual doped TMH etching has been explained in detail in my micro machining lecture. So, we used the 5 weight percent and temperature we use 70 degree C from both side to release accelerometer structure and define flexure thickness and flexure thickness is we designed for 20 micrometer, but exactly 20 micrometer you may not get it after thickness etching you have to again measure the thickness of the flexure it will be nearly that thickness. So, that whatever thickness after etching you are getting it. So, with that thickness you have to recalculate or uh, re-estimate again how much will be the output voltage of the uh, bridge and it. So, obviously whatever the stress values you have defined earlier during the design it will not be the same if the flexure thickness is different. And flexure thickness exact flexure thickness you cannot get until unless you go for this uh, the uh, the doping selective etching or e electrochemical etching. Here we what we follow here is a time etch. So, time etch uh, disadvantage also I mentioned in my lectures on micro machining the here uh, all the flexure whatever you need the thickness that may not be available. If you go for time etch some variation will be there because of uncertainty in recording time of etching. Anyway, so, uh, the etch rate of the TMH at 5 weight percent dual dope is a 0 0.8 micron per minute and how much thickness you have to etch, how much silicon thickness you have to etch. So, that you can determine and accordingly you can dip the complete thick uh, OFR into the TMH solution for that time. So, now uh, how the process flows? Then uh, that I will show you. Uh, that will give you a complete, uh, a, a full-fledged idea of how this thing is going on. Now we know this uh, left side is a, is, is a. You can see here the structure of the in the left side is a structure of the accelerometer, and along a a dash, we have we are drawing here the cross-section diagram process flow. Now initially the end silicon wafer. Now what is done? 
if the oxide is grown, when you grow the oxide it will be from top and bottom, both side oxide is there, that uh, oxide is grown. In the next step, we just lithography for piezoresistive formation, that means front side lithography you have made, so that you open the windows from the top side oxide where the boron needs to be doped. Then the boron diffusion, P deposition and driving diffusion we made, so you can the pink color regions are the boron atoms which has already inserted into the silicon wafer. Then we go for the boron driving, initially the pre deposition and driving. During the driving process, whatever the groups followed and that will again cover. So, that means oxide both front and back side will cover the silicon, bare silicon. So, that is after boron driving, it looks like that. Next step is the lithography for contact and front side etching that you can see here, the contact has been opened and uh, 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 the, the, the oxide was etched and, and, uh, and uh, uh, the, it is, it is uh, the front side is defined. Now, next we go for the lithography for back side etching using double side alignment. So, wherever the resistances is there and you have to see those regions because it all the diagram which you, you can see here is cross section along A, A dash which is shown in the right side of the, the middle sensor uh, structure. So, the, the bottom side also uh, the oxide is removed. Then in the next step, you can go for uh, the uh, aluminum metallization and patterning. So, aluminum metallization the green levels are aluminum the along the cross section diagram it is again. So, now you can go for the, uh, the silicon etching in dual dope TMH, so it will looks like that. Since the structure is only along A A dash, so the front side the uh, etching front side uh, particularly the periphery of the, the proof mass is not shown here, that whole diagram is along A A dash, okay. that is why you can see only the back side etching only front side etching part is not shown here in this diagram. So, with that you can get the cross section along A A dash like that and this is a 2 inch wafer in the, in the, the about 12 pieces you can see the accelerometer uh, the front view of the complete wafer is shown here and one individual structure is, is ma in magnification it is here. You can see the metal lines how it is moving over the flexure and the bond pads are also shown. Okay. The individual wafer is individual piece of accelerometer is shown in the right side diagram and the complete wafer is shown here in the left side diagram. Okay. So, this is the thing. So, here some photo micrographs are shown of on different places. So, you can see this is the SCM micrograph. So, uh, the picture one shows the aluminum metal line how it moves and the flexure. Particularly this picture is shown to show you how the flexure has been made. And another thing is to be one important point is when you are make the design, particularly the proof mass design, then you can see the corner. I have mentioned you earlier that at the corner H rate is faster. So, that is why you have to in all such design, you have to allow a corner compensation. That means, since corner H rate is more compared to the lateral uh, or, or, or vertical H rate in the side. So, what normally is done, you can see uh, here. So, this is the basically the flexure. Now, this corner you have seen that it has been etched and ultimately it is rounded here. Similarly, here also rounded, but if we need the perfect square structure then what is normally done on the mask side you have to make a corner compensation structure something like that. So, if you make that, so it will attack from this side, it will attack from this side, that side. So, ultimately it may end up in a complete square. So, that corner compensation uh, is given, so that here you can you, you, you can see that is the almost a nearly perfect you have got it. The otherwise uh, the, if you do not give the corner compensation then it will be looked like that, because it will etch more at the corner, this corner, this corner and this corner. 
but the complete square structure you cannot get it. So, that is one point I have not mentioned earlier, but during mask fabrication that you have to add. And this is the flexure dimension how the flexure has been made that is shown is a SCM micrograph also this length is 10 micrometer. So, from there if you scale it, so you can easily measure the thickness of this flexure and this is the width of the flexure you can easily measure. So, this is a micrograph of the flexure and this is the 12 pieces and one piece is shown and this along with the metal lines. Okay. Now, So, is a first you have fabricated the middle sensor, but accelerometer structure you have seen there are three pieces, two cap layers are there for your damping analysis you need upper cap layer and bottom cap layer has to be delineated is, is delineated. So, that during the movement of the middle probe mass, so uh, the proper, proper damping is to be made by allowing certain gas or air with certain pressure, certain viscosity in between the gap between the probe mass and the bottom and top cap layer. So, next step is to design and fabrication of the top and bottom cap layer. So, top and bottom cap layer normally we make out of the glass, pyrex glass is normally used and how the glass is again micromachined and structured so that it will, it will be, uh, it will be just uh, cover top as well as bottom and from the top cover the bonding pad is to be separated out because if you cover the bonding pads there is two input and two output and one substrate contact if you want to connect those things. So, those portion is to be left when you are going for the substrate to glass bonding. So, for that you have to again design the mask for the glass etching and a bonding technique is used silicon glass anodic bonding technique which will help you bonding of silicon and glass and the substrate bonding and details of the mechanism of bonding will be discussed in some other lecture. So, here what we follow and basically that follow uh, for uh, etching the glass that only I will discuss. So, in all MEMS devices we need that except say few cases most uh, cases means like thermal sensor you may not require top and bottom glass coverage, but most of the inertial sensor we need some cover plates either from top and bottom both or only from the bottom in some cases not from the top in pressure also you need if you need the absolute pressure or relative pressure accordingly you have to select whether you will cover both top and bottom using the glass plate or either bottom or top. Now, again glass to this is two purpose it serves, one purpose is protection of the sensing element from outside and hazardous environment. So, this cover not only this it, it, it in accelerator particularly it is for damping it is required, there are in other cases also we use some encapsulation or the passivation layer that you know that is used only for the reason. What is the reason? Reason is protection of the chip from the environmental hazards. Okay. So, uh, here the glass and silicon bonding has been done using the anodic bonding technique and that basically if we apply a voltage of the order of say 500 to 1000 volt and increase the temperature of the glass and substrate to 350 to 450 degree C, then the, the silicon and glass will be bonded together which you cannot separate. That is known as the field assisted bonding or anodic bonding. And this is very, very sensitive technology in the respect that when you bond the silicon and glass, so surface of the silicon and glass is to be extremely clean. If it is not clean, contamination is there or not smooth enough, so bonding will not be proper and it cannot be sealed. 
Another point is to be noted the matching of the thermal expansion coefficient that is also a problematic thing. And sodium rich glass should have the equivalent thermal coefficient of expansion as silicon which is 3.253 10 minus 6 per k at 400 Kelvin. So, if you go for 400 Kelvin temperature during the bonding, so there the matching of the expansion coefficient is also important because after that when you cool it will crack, the bonding regions will be cracked and sealing will not be the proper. So, these are the two points one is the matching of the expansion coefficient and other is the, the clean, clean, cleanliness of the surface of both glass and silicon where you are making the anodic bonding. So, with that we this is one kind of bonding machine you can see here whole thing is to be done in a vacuum chamber at low pressure. So, that the environment hazards will not be there in vacuum chamber there are two electrodes where you can apply voltage and at the same time you have to heat the heat the substrate in the range of as I mentioned 3 to 400 degree Kelvin and then if you allow certain time and it will be automatically bonded anodic bonding will be there. This is some uh, indigenous equipment made in our laboratory for preliminary studies on the silicon glass anodic bonding and later on we have also procured a, a very good machine substrate bundle machine and that will help and there are a lot of uh, the preventive measures has been taken in that advanced machine substrate bonding machine which we have recently bought and there you can bond the anodic bonding or thermo compression bonding or some other kind of bonding is are also possible fusion bonding that is also possible. Now, so here that means the system is to be evacuated DC power has to be added uh, supplied and temperature temperature is to be increased. So, accordingly the whole system is not so simple it is complicated in a vacuum system if you heat the substrate in a high temperature and with a high voltage. So, automatically the whole module is not so simple like the normal evaporation system vacuum system which you use for aluminum or gold evaporation it will be complicated. Anyway we have done it now uh, some other points are also mentioned here since the glass is composed of silicon dioxide the glass HN should be HF based solution. Now that part which I discussed is the the bonding part, but now the glass etching glass micromachine how do you uh, how do you do it. So, glass is nothing but silicon dioxide. So, obviously, its etching solution will be hydrophoric based solution and then you have to mask the glass and if you etch the whole thing by the hydrophoric acid then thing is that you have to have some protective layer photoresist layer may not withstand long time in the hydrophoric acid solution which, which you can use for etching glass. So, we go for a another we go for another uh, the passivation layer for glass etching that is chromium gold. Chromium gold metal mask gold is a metal. So, is, is better solution as the hydrophoric based solution will not allow you to use photoresist as a masking material. So, the H rate variation of different concentration of HF solution at different temperature has to be made before glass machining. So, if you use the glass how the uh, the gold chromium gold layer is useful for your etching to know that part you have to go for a, a systematic study of what systematic study that the H rate variation with temperature and concentration of the hydrophoric acid. So, that has been made and this is the micrograph of the H cap layer you can see this is a glass piece has been just uh, etched in different pieces and in the middle portion also thin down about say 20 micrometer gap which we have calculated during the damping analysis that has been made. So, now these are the H rate of the glass at different concentration the calibration curve is shown here 
the concentration versus the H rate and bottom is the temperature versus H rate. So, this, this is almost linear nature of curve which is good and from there you have to you have to take certain concentration and the temperature to H your glass and automatically if you know the H rate the timing is also fixed to how much you want to H depending on that you can allow that time for etching glass in hydrophobic solution. So, this for that this calibration curves are important. Now, this is the process steps for fabrication of the glass cap layer and here you can see uh, you can see the from the first uh, the cross section diagram is the glass substrate. Then what you have done the chromium film that is required for gold adhesion few hundred angstrom unit and top of that is a gold film and now the gold film uh, is uh, this pattern. After patterning the gold film the chromium is a bottom it will it is still there then you go for the photoresist cover this is a photoresist and after photoresist cover then a particular region you remove photo because each window opening you require a photo masking. So, you etch this particular region and first photoresist is dissolved then the gold uh, already removed in earlier diagram. So, then chromium is removed and then you go for etching and then you will etch little bit on the glass not the complete some portion is etched. You can see next phase what has been done. So, here window is open after the after this region the left side of that another window which was uh, the gold was removed earlier. So, that portion is open now. So, now here also you started etching during this step here also it will continue it. So, here etch depth will be more and compared to the, the side depth. So, here and then you remove uh, the the photoresist as well as the chromium layer from, from the whole region where the proof mass will bend that region. So, now you again go for glass etching. So, as a result of which since you have open window at the very beginning this region. So, automatically what will happen? So, this particular region will completely thorough hole will be there and here uh, the edge depth will be will be less compared to the thorough, thorough hole region and subsequently which you have opened at the later stage there the edge depth will be nearly 20 micron. <coughs> so, why I made like that because somewhere I made thorough hole somewhere I need this scribe line. So, that is why I have I opened the windows in in different times and at the end when we go for etching it will etch all the layer somewhere thorough hole somewhere scribe line and somewhere the desired delineation you will get it. Okay. This is the process steps of making the glass cap layer. Then here uh, the picture shows the middle layer is shown here you can see this is the middle layer. So, now in the left side and right side are the two glass pieces which we etched and separated and in the this you can see the size of the glass piece for one and glass piece two are not same different because one is the at the bottom you need the complete size you need the glass this is a complete size and in the top it is smaller size why because you need the bonding pad region to be excluded from the cover. So, if you put the bottom layer at the bottom and the top layer at the top. So, then it looks like that. So, you can see here this is one the glass layer that is the one layer one and in the bottom is the layer two and in between this is a layer two and in between you can see the bonding pad regions are, are open. So, that you can take bonding here, here, here and here. So, these are four bonding pads required two for inputs and two for input means a power supply and two for output that is excluded that is outside the <coughs> glass cover. So, with that the this is up to this you have just substrate bonding substrate to glass bonding is over. Now, in the next next step you have to package it. So, you see again I have repeated this is the middle layer this is the middle layer. So, uh, middle layer is this one now top and 
bottom cap layer you have bonded this is this one after that what is the next step the step 1 step 2 the next step step 3 is here so that is uh, this is step 3 that is the wire bonding so you see the bonding pads 1 2 3 4 if you see minutely in the figure so bonding pads are connected one here so so one here one here and another is here here so this one is here so okay and one is substrate contact the four bonding pads after this is the encapsulated the the case and on the case is a metal can basically first thing is the whole chip which is shown here glass silicon glass is to be fixed at the middle and then wire bonding is done then top cap layer if you put the top this is not the the sensor cap layer but it is the encapsulation the top metal can en encapsulation is covered then the complete the accelerometer looks like this this is the accelerometer with this is the leads and this is this particular package is not ideally meant for this accelerometer because here you need only five bonding pads but you can see how many pins are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 is 22 pin so it is a 22 pin package basically and you need only a half of that this portion but commercially available package with only the four or five pins and internal size of the diameter or internal size of the size of the accelerometer is not available that is why we use that particular package where you can use double chip into the same package here also you can put another chip so that two things can be done on the same package and for uh, different application ok. So, this is the package. So, after packaging is done what is the next step? Next step is this is another kind of package is shown that is no, also not meant for that accelerometer for basically the big VLSI chip, but since uh, the the standard uh, the custom package was not available we tried with this also initially for some testing and that is why we have seen two packages and this is uh, with cover with encapsulation. Now, the next part is the interface electronics. So, interface circuit for characterization of the accelerometer we need what we need three things we require one is the offset null circuit because uh, the resistance values will not exactly same which is designed in different arm the resistance values may differ. So, because of that you will get some offset value offset means when you do not apply any acceleration 0 g. So, uh, the bridge is perfectly balanced and output should be 0, but that will not be there because some mismatch of the resistance values in different arms. So, that has to be cancelled before you go for actual testing. So, for that you can use a circuit for offset null circuit and that has been uh, shown in uh, in some of my lectures the electronics circuits and the next requirement is the amplifier and you we used here chopper stabilized the instrumentation amplifier has been used for that particular purpose because that reduce both 1 by f noise because you know here the sensor signal is very low frequency and almost DC to uh, 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 and maximum is nearly 100 hertz or something like that. So, low frequency DC signal is to be amplified. So, without incorporation of much noise ok and for that the chopper stabilized in instrumentation amplifier is ideal and some such res, uh, the amplifier module is available in the market. We can connect that the Houston's bridge is shown here R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4 these are basically the bridge bridge uh, resistance and is connected with the amplifier and the offset null circuit all has been connected and that is shown in this diagram the test board along with the interface electronics. So, this is the package this is two both the package is shown one package is here here and another package is here. So, now these are the the uh, you can see the T C 7 6 5 2 that is uh, the chopper stabilized amplifier and two trim ports are connected in the board and that is basically for uh, exact nulling of the offset because some external trimming arrangement is also there. So, that different accelerometer may have different offset voltage. So, that you should have some external control. So, that you can get exact null with 0 g condition for that 
these two trim ports are connected and the its amplified version is amplification is uh, made so, in the, so, so that you can get plus minus 6.5 volt output that was the initial specification. And if you go in the next stage then you can see the sensor bridge will provide a differential low frequency less than 100 hertz low amplitude less than 20 millivolt signal which is to be amplified within plus minus 6.5 volt peak to peak. The resistance values used to achieve plus minus 6.5 volt are R1, R2 equal to 1 kilo ohm and R3, R4 equal to 500 ohm kilo ohms. Above design amplifier using TC7652 configuration provides stable output up to 200 hertz. The calibration is linear providing a gain of 306.67 which is nearly 25 dB. With this configuration the signal handling capacity of the amplifier is 54 millivolt that is the, the test board which is made. So, now the characterization for characterization means initially we have to measure the individual resistances. So, that has been measured on bare chip and three devices has been made and you can see for different arm. So, 1 to 4, 1 means uh, this point is 1, this is fourth band point, second bound point and third bound point. So, 1 to 4, if you measure from here to here, the resistance value is 2.56 and from 2 to 3, it is 2.569. So, this should be equal. So, you can although 2.5 in the second decimal place, little variation is there. Similarly, 1, 2 and 1, 3, it is nearly 2, 2.028, 1.96. 2, 4 and 3, 4, 1.87, 1.98. So, it should be e exactly equal, but it is not there because of such slight variation of the resistance values. Device 2 is also similar 2.74, 2.71. So, if you look individual values, say the values are almost equal with slight variation because of that you are getting the offset value and variation in resistance values from the theoretical values is found in nearly 10 percent whatever design and these are the measured value and we got nearly 10 percent variation of the resistance that is always allowed and because of that we you are we are getting the offset voltage. Now, individual resistance has been made. So, individual resistance whatever design 1.5 k, but we are not getting it we are getting as 1.34 kilo ohm 1.36. So, 2 m the frame ends 1 m 2 m 3 m 4 m 1 f 2 f 3 f 4 f these are the mass ends m and F stands for frame end and the connections are like that which is shown here. So, individual values are also measured and we found that that variation is also within 10 percent, but it is not very wide apart. So, that shows that there is a possibility of uh, a possibility that we may achieve the targeted value of the means design value of the accelerometer. So, now these are some other measurements. This is the measurement results of the accelerometer chip with interface electron setup. This is the offset. So, initially if you do not use that offset offset null circuit that is shown with power supply variation 0 to 15 volt, we got the offset bridge voltage is nearly 400 millivolt. So, 400 millivolt is very high offset value. So, you cannot use that particular uh, bridge for sensing. So, we connected that that offset null circuit in the test board which I have just now I have shown you. So, there with incorporation of that offset null circuit we got here the offset value reduced at 15 volt it reduced to only 10 millivolt. Initially it was 450 millivolt 10 millivolt, but power supply is not 15 millivolt we are going to use only 5 volt. So, for 5 volt range we have seen only up to this region if you see here. So, here the offset value is nearly 0.2 millivolt. So, since it is a 0.2 millivolt, so that is acceptable for further measurement. Now, next step we did some acceleration measurement, only z axis measurement is shown here and 0 to nearly uh, uh, 10 or 12 g we have measured and we found is highly linear. This is a measured value after packaging, is a dynamic testing and the experimental is a value and best fit curve is shown here and here the offset we found 0.06 millivolt in this particular case and in the second curve is a negative acceleration this is a positive acceleration 
means one is acceleration, other is deceleration. So, that in both the cases we found from 0 to 13 g which for which we have measured. So, in both the cases we found is exactly linear curve and is, is, that is highly desirable and the output voltage we are getting is nearly 500 micro volt per g. So, mean acceler acceleration output we got 506.22 micro volt per g. Fortson linearity has been calculated and if you use the maximum deviation, then we are getting 0 0.88 percent. If you mean deviation, then we got the linearity 0 0.253 percent. So, the linearity allowed in design is less than 1 percent and we got the targeted value, it is well below 1 percent and, and output is 506 and here we are not getting the output as per your design value. The reason is that there we have designed the flexure thickness of only 20 micron but later on we measured the flexure thickness is nearly 30 or 32 micron. So, because of the variation of the flexure thickness here also because flexure thickness thicker means you will not get much output, output will be lower because it is not that much sensitive. So, because of that we got reduced value of the output for g. Now, the next is a off axis acceleration measurement that also we have made here along x axis acceleration along y axis acceleration the curve. <coughs> is shown here and that value is extremely small compared to z axis acceleration. Z axis you got nearly 500 micro volt per g, but here you will get the value is 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 a nearly here yeah, yeah, 26 micro volt per g. So, that means it is highly 500 in z, z direction 500 micro volt and x and y direction only 26 micro volt per g. So, off axis sensitively less, but we have to agree the fact that the it is not as low as design value because of various reasons of the fabrication tolerance is not exactly so um, um, uh, which is required which is estimated in, in our design. So, accordingly off axis sensitivity is not that high, high value, uh, but it is 500 is 26 at least one more than one order less. Okay. So, now if you see the resolution studies of the of the accelerometer, then you can see uh, you can see here we can measure the resolution in the z direction up to 0.25. This is a 2.2, 2.25. This is a 2.3. Here you can see 0 0.05. 0 0.05 g we could resolve the because you can get the z axis accelerometer difference 1.197, 1.225 here. So difference is there. So that means up to 0.25 g you can resolve, but again it could be resolved in a further low, but because of the measurement facilities not available to give milli g acceleration that could not be measured. That is the limitation of our test facility, but here still we can find that up to 0.25 g means 250 milli g it is resolving. Okay. So, anyway so that is some of the negative and positive z axis the resolution has been studied. So, with that actually uh, let us conclude that what we did today in today's lecture. So, how the accelerometer piezo raise to accelerometer is fabricated that is discussed in detail and the technology optimization has been done offset voltage circuit shows that within 5 volt the offset can be reduced up to 0 0.2 millivolt using external circuit that is also possible. How to make the upper and lower cap layer from pyrex glass that has been discussed in detail and accelerometer packaging substrate bonding is shown and the, the external circuits are also connected with the, with the main sensing element and at the end it has been characterized with the limitation of characterization facilities and all these things shows that the although it is not exactly the same as the design value very close to the design value we achieve the target specifications. And with this I can conclude this lecture means case study on the fabrication of MEMS accelerometer using the piezo resistive pickup technique. Thank you very much.
today we will discuss on MEMS capacitive accelerometer. In my last lecture, uh, last few lectures I spent on MEMS piezoresistive accelerometer, a case study that is particularly for avionics application. We just dis described how a accelerometer is designed and then what will be the technology, fabrication steps and its, its, uh, its uh, characterization. And today I want to spend on another case study that is MEMS capacitive accelerometer that is for generalized application for defense and many other uh, automobile sector also we require such accelerometer. So, MEMS capacitive accelerometer a case study that is the topic of discussion today. Now, the design specifications of that accelerometer is a range of the accelerometer is plus minus 10 g, over range is 30 g that means up to 30 g there is no destruction of the device it should withstand. Damping ratio is 0 0.7 to 1.2 natural frequency is 100 hertz, nonlinearity plus minus 1 percent full scale, resolution 0 0.02 g maximum and threshold is 0 0.01 g maximum. Operating temperature range is minus 85 to plus 40 degree C. So, now with this specification how do we proceed to design a accelerometer which is based on capacitive, uh, capacitive sensing. Now, the structure of the capacitive accelerometer is shown in the figure here, you can see and this figure is three modules, you can see in the middle piece is basically the sensing element and it comprises of a proof mass which is also known as a seismic mass which can move freely between two fixed electrodes. What are the two fixed electrodes? One is held at the top and another is held at the bottom. Thank you. 